What is going on, guys? We're live. So sorry that I'm a little bit late, but I uh, wanted to jump on here to uh, finally, finally explain some stuff. Um, we are able to finally kind of clear the air um, about something that's been happening for a long time. Just got, um, just got the go ahead that we can kind of talk about this. And uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of come on here. A lot of you have been asking about it. I just recently posted on Facebook and Instagram. On Instagram, it just kind of caught like wildfire. And uh, a lot of you kind of wanted me to elaborate on this. Um, and so, yeah, so we're going to do that. But for those of you that have never, uh, did, never knew that we were doing a greenhouse project, um, you missed a lot of drama. You missed a lot of drama, a lot of chaos. But um, basically... To bring you guys all up to speed, uh, we had proposed doing a project about three years ago. It was a, a huge project, a massive project. And uh, one of those, you know, one of the things behind the massive project was finding land. And when we found land, the, the problem was not that we didn't do our due diligence. As we'll talk about, I'll get, I'll get into all the details, but we didn't, we did our due diligence. What it really came down to was Someone that just felt as if we were, you know, we were worth regulating when other things weren't worth regulating. And ultimately really came down to a single person being given power that ultimately, I mean, I, I disagree with, but there's not a whole lot you can do in these circumstances besides just uh, turn lemons into lemonade. So, uh, what I want to talk about first is the site. So I'm going to share with you the site because basically the reason why I can even talk about this right now is because not only has the case been closed, um, we were in litigation with the state of Michigan for, well, not really litigation. They had filed a violation on us. Basically, essentially, you know, uh, forcing us to remedy the issue and that was a very costly, very time consuming process. Um, so um, I'll show you the map first. I'll show you what the property uh, looked like and um, we'll, we'll go from there. So um, hello, how's it going guys? Yeah, so we'll totally go into all of the details on this property as we get going. Uh, a lot of you wanted details. A lot of you wanted some stuff that I kind of, hopefully I'm gonna educate you guys uh, on things to look out for, things to be careful of. And ultimately, you know, I'd love to see this type of thing change. There's not a whole lot that we can do going forward because as I said in my post, there's only so much energy and money I can put towards this. And ultimately the state of Michigan, they are they have a bottomless pit of resources and they will fight tooth and nail. They, they are right no matter what. And that's really ultimately the, the crux of the problem is that they're right no matter what. They will never be wrong and they'll, they will basically, you know, they'll, they'll come hell or high water. They will, uh, they'll prove that they're right. And so it's not worth, it's just not worth fighting, not worth fighting. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys the property first. I'm going to kind of show you guys, okay, I'll show you a screen here. So I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully this is going to come through. Let's see. Okay. All right. One second here. Okay. So uh, this this is the um, this is the basically the the property as it stands right now. Um, this is the uh, this is basically the the current layout. And what you'll notice here is, um, so this is the actual property right here. Now, um, there is a on-ramp to a major expressway, which, you know, kind of conveniently uh, lies right in the, right in the heart of this said wetlands. There's also homes over here, which, you know, conveniently have, thanks to Semco, uh, I can, uh, 
I can zoom right in on these people's homes. Um, and you'll notice, you know, you'll notice there's, there seems to be no said wetlands. In fact, there's, you know, uh, basically sheds right up to the property line. Now, what you will notice are these darker spots here. These darker spots are kind of, they're, they're ditches. The, the land was cleared. Um, the land was cleared well prior to us even buying the property. And so when we walked the property, we knew that there was wet spots. We knew that there was, you know, parts that would, that would hold water more than others. And we took into account, obviously, the fact that there is, um, you know, a major Meyer grocery store here. Um, there's homes here. There is a major on-ramp. Um, there is a gas station. Um, there's a, a huge gas station right over here. Um, and basically, uh, we, you know, we did the best that we could to do due diligence, uh, do, to do due diligence. Now, uh, there's, there'll be a lot of people that will say things like, when you bought the property, what did, you know, what did you do? Cause obviously you didn't do your due diligence. Obviously you failed and you should have done more work. We had what's known as a wetlands delineation done. In fact, we had two wetlands delineations done. We had a preliminary, which looked at what is called, uh, it's a phase one or a phase two environmental. A phase one environmental essentially looks at uh, if there are any records of buried tanks, anything that might have chemicals that can leach into the ground that you need to remediate. You need to actually, you as the new buyer of the property, before you can develop the property, need to, you know, if you buy an old gas station, you, ne you need to be in charge of, you know, remediating the land so that it doesn't, so that it doesn't uh, fall into disrepair. Phase two environmental looks at things like wetlands. And what we did was, is we did a phase two environmental, which essentially looks at the wetlands, the National Wetlands Registry, and um, the the National Wetlands Registry will show registered wetlands that are known to the to basically the the you know, the government entities that want to access that. Typically, it's the EPA, and in our case, it's Eagle, and Eagle um, rules with an iron fist. And some would say an iron scepter because they are, I can't even get into it. It is, it is, they're, they're the most, we won't even go there. They are the judge, the jury, and the executioner. They were given power through the governor. The governor gave them power and essentially rolled them into the EPA all into one. So that now you don't have the, the MEPA, which is the Michigan Environmental Protection Agency, and then the Great Lakes Energy uh, and all those you know, different clean water and air access, it's all under one umbrella now. It's known as Eagle. And they are ruthless. They are absolutely the most criminal organization when it pertains to protecting the environment. I, before you guys go crazy, I am absolutely 100% all for protecting true wetlands, true wetlands. I'm not going to take a left side or a right side of the aisle approach. This is a bipartisan thing that I think everyone should agree on is that wetlands should be protected. They're a very vital resource to the environment, to our ecosystem, to our waterways living in the Great Lakes. I care a lot about them. Very, very passionate about wetlands all for it. But I'm also very passionate about pro-business, pro-freedom of, you know, the ability to do what you can do on your property. And ultimately, um, there was quite a lot of negligence on Eagle's behalf that is, they, they, can, they can be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. So I'm going to show you, um, I just got to pull it up here. Um, I'm going to show you the 
essentially the delineation that was done. Um, I just got to pull up the email because uh, we have we have good good email uh, good email records here. So, all right. So I'm going to share with you. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to pull up a email here, and again, I want you guys to remember this is not a you know. I see a lot of people in the comments obviously saying, well, blame the governor. Well, when we had looser regulations, still nothing was done. So ultimately, it comes down to the fact that there's a money trail. And that's really ultimately what it comes down to. There's a money trail, um, which we'll get into. So uh, the, let's see here. Okay, so this is the email that was done through Bar Engineering. Um, here we go. Here, this is uh, you know a a document that was done through uh, the you know, through the surveying process, methodology reviews. Here is an overview of the site. These are the trees that we cleared here. As you can see, it was already previously cleared. Um, it was actually fully forested at one point, but yet there was never, there was never any issues brought to the previous landowners. Only once we touched it, which is I find very funny. Um, goes through vegetative uh, soil hydrology, things like that. It gives you an overview, and here's your conclusions. So it says here, based on the uh, observations, vegetative soil. Um, it basically determines that there were wetlands habitats present, which we knew, right? Which we knew. However, the state of Michigan can only regulate a wetlands if it is located within 500 feet or having a direct to surface water connection to an in lake, pond, river, or stream. It's greater than five acres in size. It's located within 1,000 feet of having a direct surface water connection to the Great Lakes. Um, you know, uh, known documentation of endangered species, things like that. However, as you'll see here, the on-site portion of wetlands A and C is less than five acres in size. It does not appear to be located within 500 feet of an inland lake, pond, water, uh, river, or stream. Um, and then wetland B and D appears to be unregulated as they are less than five acres in size and do not appear to be regulated, uh, located within 500 feet or have a direct surface water connection to an inland lake, pond, river, or stream. So this was the first, this was the delineation that we had done, the second delineation the most thorough delineation. This was not cheap. This was very, very, very expensive. This delineation that was done basically was a third party uh, wetlands surveyor. This is what they do. They literally work with some of the biggest companies and corporations in the, basically in the entire country to work with them, to work through some of these issues. And what they found is that there was not a regulatable, uh, there was not a, uh, there was not a regulatable wetlands. However, then what happened was, is uh, because we had a violation, we had done some clearing of the property and they said that we did the clearing on a regulated wetlands. The Eagle said this. So we submitted a site plan of what we were going to do. Uh, the site plan essentially was um, what uh, we created a site plan to kind of show where our project was going to be, the wetlands and stuff like that. And so, um, so we submitted a site plan. And the site plan is ultimately what gave us our violations. So I'll show you the site plan. Uh, this again is something that um, we have well documented. So this is the the wetlands delineation that was done. These here are signs of wetlands. This is upland. This is lowland. Lowland does not mean wetland. It could hold water periodically, or it could simply just always hold water. There's really a very loose 
translation to what wetlands is. And here's the overlay of the project. So this was, this is what these were, uh, this was the main greenhouse. These were the back houses, as you can see. There's, this was gonna be a retention pond here. We needed a retention pond. As a lot of people have asked me, well, why wouldn't you just have a retention pond for preventing things like runoff? This is was required. You need a retention pond if you're gonna have this much area. Most places have a retention pond over a certain square footage. Parking lots, structures, anything where water can run off of needs to go someplace. The problem is this retention pond is, we didn't even dig it yet. It's, in, it's just proposed in the wetlands. Building one, this was an out, a little outbuilding for storage, was in a wetlands. Uh, part of the parking lot was slightly in a wetlands and some of the back houses were in a wetlands. Now, all of this is fine because none of this was even done. We just cleared the land. Well, because we cleared the land, we technically disturbed soil that was, and again, this is three years ago. We technically disturbed soil that was in a wetlands and you're not able to do that. That's a bad no-no, can't do that. So even though it had been pre previously completely cleared, there was no slap on the wrist, nothing. We cleared maybe about an acre's worth of dead trees that were, some, some were alive, but were large and just in the way. Others were dead and just needing to be brought down. There was an old house on the property. We brought every, tore everything down because it was all uninhabitable. It was all, I mean, there was a, it was a, a drug house. Literally, we found drugs on the property. I mean, it was, it was just a mess. It was an absolute mess. So we did all the clearing, then they slap us. So we spent we spent approximately two hundred and sixty thousand dollars to purchase the property, and my gardener did. Um, so yes, over a quarter million dollars was spent. Uh, then the uh, the clearing of the property was another fifty thousand dollars. So now we're three hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars. And then on top of that, um, once we were slapped with the the violations, we spent approximately another $50,000 on what's considered, uh, you know, just um, consultant fees, essentially. Incredibly expensive. Most people would never think in their wildest dreams of just having this. And then, and then essentially not even being able to do anything. Just essentially just, whoop, see, well, that's uh, burnt money. Yep, that's literally what happened. We did all of our due diligence. We did everything right. Everything was done according to the book. Um, and then Eagle came in and basically said, nope, sorry, we have other plans. Now I will show you, I will show you, this is, uh, again, this is not a fight that I, this is not even a fight that I care to have anymore. A lot of you just have been writing in wanting to see this because so many of you are sick and tired of things happening like this. And I'm sick and tired as well. Michigan is hands down, forget California, California very, very strict when it comes to environmental regulations. And again, I'm I'm the first person to say, save the trees. I'm the first person to say, save the wetlands. I'm the first person to say, stop, you know, don't develop on legitimate wetlands. I'm the first person. So don't get, don't get me misconstrued with someone that's just, you know, fill in all the wetlands, pro big business. Let's just cover everything. No, 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 no. This is a greenhouse operation that was going to be pr promoting growing food uh, and and flowers and other things that help you know help the environment, but also it was done on a site that was very, by most accounts, very safe to develop. Um, so this is how the this is how Eagle, this is how Eagle decided that. This was regulated. Now, remember, we have to go back to what is considered regulatable, right? It has to be more than five acres. Ours was not. It has to be located within 500 feet of a lake, river, stream, etc. It was not. It has to be, uh, it has to contain uh, endangered species. It did not. It's part of the inspection process. We had to comb basically the entire property to look for things that would be considered endangered species, both animals and plants. None were found. 
but because the property does have wetland species on it, like things like cattails or phragmites, um, which phragmites are invasive, by the way, which is crazy. But because of the type of soil that we have in this area, it's called glacial drift. And what happens, I'll pull up a map so you guys can see this. What happens is glacial drift essentially will carve out these different low spots that can hold water. The soil in where we're located is actually very heavy clay. Clay holds onto water quite well. And then what happens is on top of the clay sits things like topsoil or, you know, just organic matter in general. This typically in a wetlands has what's called hydrology. It's how the water moves through the soil. And in a legitimate wetlands, what would happen is the wetlands would essentially take the water and it would filter through the wetlands to filter out any pollutants, things that could actually contaminate the water. It also acts as a carbon sink. So things like, you know, carbon, uh, so like, um, you know, carbon emissions, right? It can actually help to trap those things to actually, uh, to reduce greenhouse gases. Um, so there's, there's a lot of benefits to, to a greenhouse. Uh, whereas if you notice the clay on our property does not allow water to penetrate through to actually filter. So what do they do to skirt around that? They just say, well, if water can somehow kind of, if, if it holds water for long enough and it contains wetland like plants, could the water somehow enter a, a stream or a river of the Great Lakes? Because then that could be considered regulated. Okay, fair. There's lots of, they, they call it uh, uh, riptarian, I believe. It's, uh, it's areas next to a lake that are not lake, but in fact land, but they're wet long enough to actually kind of filter out some of the things that enter the water. So I'm gonna show you guys um, this. This is, uh, this is, this is, and I say it is the craziest stretch. And by all accounts, um, I have many, many accounts of this uh, where they say this is, this was one of the largest stretches, you know, they're really moving those goalposts as far as they can that they've seen in a long time. Um, it's been also by, I have not asked them for permission, so I cannot use their name. However, many of the people we were working with said this is an absolute witch hunt. It's a witch hunt. And I'll show you how. So, so this, uh, I'm going to show you this. This is, um, this is their, this is their direct surface water connection. Okay, so, so uh, we're gonna go to Google Maps. Okay, so remember this is, this is what it looked like prior to us, this was us prior to us clearing it, right? So mind you, Major on-ramp, no issues there with wetlands. Somehow the wetlands just have a perfect line. I don't even know how that happens. That's really crazy. These homes have must have a perfect line drawn, just flawless, perfect. Okay, so we're going to zoom in here. We're going to zoom in really far. See this little hand-dug ditch here? Well, this hand-dug ditch was done because in the springtime, it, it floods. It just... It captures all the water from all this freaking off-ramp water flooding into the property. And then all these properties, which, oh, they have, they don't have a wetlands conveniently. They have grass. Seems pretty crazy. Well, all of the water that sits on our property, they just decided, well, we're just going to dig a, a hand ditch. The state of Michigan, folks does not give a rat's behind if you or someone prior to you digs a ditch once it has water moving it is now considered it cannot be considered 
a water feature. It can be considered a, like a county drain that was hand dug or you know dug by machinery can actually regulate certain wetlands. This little ditch right here, little ditch runs around here and enters a drain, uh, just a just a uh, another another roadside ditch. That roadside ditch runs along here, runs along here. Mind you, this is what this is what claims us as a wetlands. Runs along here, seems to just disappear. They didn't really care about that, but it picks up. Another ditch. I gotta zoom out because it's gonna take forever. This ditch, this roadside ditch, goes all the way over here, keeps on a going. Keeps on going. Mind you, this is this is the surface connection that connects this to the wonderful Great Lakes of Michigan. This is the surface connection that prevent this is the surface connection that cleans the water. Mind you, there's busy streets. How is how is the water clean if it's getting recontaminated? I mean, I asked them that. I said, all, all of the traffic, all of this road traffic, how is it? How is it? that all this road traffic, this, this clean water that came off of our wetlands, that never even filtered through the soil, but in fact ran over the soil. How, how is this being clean? What, no answer to that, of course. They're, 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 they're too above their own common sense. Comes all the way over here. Still's going, still's going, still's going. We're, we're just getting started here, folks. If you think this is crazy, get ready. Buckle up. Keeps going. Keeps going. Keeps going. Oh, okay. All right. Now we got Now we got Angel Creek. Mind you, this is the first. We've already gone about, about two miles away from the property. Now we're into what's considered a creek. Creek. So it's gone from a ditch to a ditch to now a creek. This creek goes all the way. All the way. Keeps going. Keeps going. Keeps going. We're just going to follow this for comedic relief. We're going to keep following this. Keep following this creek. And let's see where we end up. Let's keep going. Keep following this creek. Keeps going. Just got to keep following the term, the word Angel Creek. Keep it going. Okay. Still is going. More contamination from roads. All this keeps going, just keeps going, just keeps going, just keeps going. Mind you, if anyone wanted to develop this property, this is a legitimate wetland. This is a legitimate, 100% legitimate wetland. It abuts a creek. There is plenty, I can see plenty of wet spots, plenty of Phragmites and cattails. There's no, no reason why this should be developed whatsoever. This should be protected. This is absolutely beneficial. Um, this is a joke. This just keeps going and going and going. I'm gonna zoom out so we don't so we don't take again forever here. So mind you, every scroll now is, you know, we're talking hundreds of feet now. Just keeps going and going. This is the uh, yep. Just keeps going and going and going and going and going. We just keeps. If you guys are laughing along with me. This is what killed almost a half a million dollar project, up to 50 jobs that were going to be created, and uh, ultimately probably took several years off of my life expectancy of stress and anxiety. So now we're in the Pine River. So now it went from a ditch to a ditch to a creek to a river. Oh man, now we're getting somewhere, folks. We got to follow the Pine River. Now the Pine River goes all the way. Gotta follow the Pine River. Okay, so now... So now, mind you, all this is still not even, you know, not even, uh, all, don't mind all the roads that go over top, all the contamination from all the tires and catalytic converters and all of that. But we're, we keep going, folks. We just keep going. Keeps on going. Don't, don't mind, you know, don't mind this massive plant here. This is just, you know, this plant within, you know, what, like, uh, what is that? Like a hundred feet? Yeah. So this little hundred foot mark, that's like whoop, about a hundred feet. Don't mind that. That's fine. That's totally fine. Totally fine. Nothing to see here. 
Just keep going. It just keeps going. And going. And going. Mind you, we haven't even touched, haven't even touched a body of water that is the Great Lakes yet. Still in rivers. Still in the still in the Pine River. Still getting close. And uh, oh wait, did we hit a lake? Nope, we didn't hit a lake. we this is the St. Clair River, folks. This is the St. Clair River. This goes all the way down to the St. Clair River. Mind you, all of that doesn't matter. None of that matters. These big coal plants over here, over in Canada, yeah, they don't they don't matter. They don't matter. All the fresh water that they've oh, you know, DT, all this all this, these are coal plants, all this. All this coal, all of this, you know, considered you know, dirty, terrible for the environment. All, all of that, none of that, none of that matters. None of that matters. Our little, our little three-acre thing is what matters. So I'm gonna zoom out just because this St. Clair River goes for a long freaking while here. Keeps going. Keeps going until you hit. A lake and this mind you this lake is not a great lakes this is considered an inland lake not a great lake this is Lake st. Clair which goes through the Detroit River the Detroit River which then enters we've reached it folks we've reached it we've reached the lake, one of the Great Lakes, Lake Erie, folks, Lake Erie, Lake Erie. We've reached it. We've reached one of the Great Lakes, what they're trying to protect. But let's just show the insanity of this. If that wasn't insane enough, I'm going to show you where our property is in relation to the outlet into the St. Clair River. Because this is wild. So here's the mire. That's the mire that we're next to. This little, where my cursor is. And we're talking all the way over here. And that's not, that's the way the crow flies. Let's just, let's just test this out. So the way the crow flies, I'm going to measure this distance. And we're going to measure the distance, the way the crow flies. And we are, let's zoom in on this dandy. Because I want you guys to see the utter insanity of this. How there's no way we could have ever see, foreseen this ever. Where the connection occurs is right here. And what is that number we see as the crow flies? That is, folks, that is six miles the way the crow flies. Six miles the way the crow flies. Straight as an arrow. Six miles. It's unfathomable. It is unfathomable fathomable how insane this is so again i am the first person to say protect the wetlands i'm the first person to say that wetlands are beneficial what we have is not a wetland not it's not a wetland. And they can use whatever definition they want because it gives them power to do that. That's why they that's why a lot of them are in the job that they're in. They love the power to say, I can be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Simple as that. There's no public appeal, there's no public hearing, there's no there's no appeals court, nothing. They are the law. They decide the law. They interpret it however they want. 
And I'm telling you that this is plain and simple. Because I'll tell you, I got so much flack from so many people that said, well, yeah, well, it's a wetlands. So, you know, you got to follow the law. What is the law? The law is that a wetlands should connect to what is considered a waters of the U.S. You know what the waters of the U.S. is? The waters of the U.S. was put in place by the Clean Water and Air Act, believe it or not. And waters of the U.S. is considered navigatable waters. This is water that you can navigate. And what Michigan did is instead say, waters of the U.S. is anything that drains into a waters of the U.S. They don't even care. It could be 30 miles inland from a ditch to 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 a ditch. There is no stopping the insanity, folks. And so I'm, again, the first person to promote, to promote saving and preserving wetlands. But what we have is not a wetland. It's just not a wetlands. Plain and simple, it's not a wetlands. Um, and so waters of the U.S. is what really dictates wetlands, but Michigan took it a step further to expand on that. Now, again, I am a very reasonable person. And when we did the wetlands delineations, that was being rational and reasonable step one. The rational, the ration, the rationing, you know, the rationale, I should say, behind that spot was that it was deemed very economically viable, was a benefit to the community, was a benefit to the local economy, and it did not have regulated wetlands. But they came on and said, well, we're going to regulate it. What do you do? What do you they, they can do whatever they want. They are the law. And by some accounts, they'd be lawless. Because they don't even follow, they, they write the laws as they go. And so it, it's crazy. You know, when you see that this, because um, I, I hear it. I trust me, I hear people all the time say, well, yeah, well, you skirt. You, you know, you rewrite the rules here, you rewrite the rules here, before long, everybody's rewriting the rules and there's no rules at all. No, the rules are extremely explicit, extremely explicit. And, you know, Eagle and the EPA and the USDA and um, Section 303 is extremely explicit with the way that the law is written. The problem is, is you have these people, these field officers, that can interpret. They're given the power to interpret the law. It's not black and white. And so, because our property happens to hold water for approximately two months out of the year, but is bone dry, bone dry, for 10 months out of the year, it holds water just long enough because that clay basin to hold like wetlands type plants, like some Phragmites and cattails. And because that water can overflow into a hand dug ditch, which was done because the water, the standing water was an inconvenience, that water can drain into another ditch, which was dug by the road commission <laughs> because the water standing there was an inconvenience. The drain commissioner dug that. And then that water can go all the way to a creek, which drains to another creek, which drains to a river, which drains to another river, which drains to an in, like a, a basically a, not a great lake, but just a normal inland lake, which drains to another river, which then drains into a great lake. And because of that, we didn't do our due diligence. We took three quarters of a million dollars, poured gasoline on it, and lit it on fire. And so the reason why I wanted to come on here and talk about all of this is because 
I am, well, number one, I'm fed up. I'm fed up with the way things are, are run. I'm fed up with the fact that a train can totally derail and the government can simply say, oh, Norfolk Southern, Norfolk Southern can do their own testing. They can hire the testing. We'll trust them. Yet when we conduct our testing to see if there's a regulatable wetlands, they say, oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. We want to see. We want facts. We want proof. It's baloney, you guys. It's absolute baloney. And I'm a gardener. I'm an environmentalist. <laughs> I am pro-environment, pro-organic gardening. I am anti-pollution, anti... -pollution, anti I'm the most improbable person you'll ever come across. But I just happen to be pro-business as well. I am pro-freedom to do what I want to do with my property. As long as it does not go outside of the bounds of the way the law is written. Right? I'm a very agreeable person on all sides of the aisle. Right? <laughs> I'm not left and I'm not right. I, I catch a lot of people off guard. Because a lot of people think that I'm some cookie cutter guy. Like, oh, you must be a, you must be a liberal, or someone says, "Oh, you must be conservative." <laughs> you got me very wrong, because I'm neither. I am, I am very much. I interpret things separately on a case by case basis. I don't paint things with a bride, a wide brush, because that's how we get into the mess that we're in. We get into the mess that we're in because we paint things with wide brushes, and then you know, now we're making both sides upset. It's like. It's very simple. But what frustrates me is that you have people on the west side of the state that get fined $500,000 because they want to put uh, a road across a ditch and the ditch you know happens to happens to go through a wetlands or the fact that um, you know to 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 build a dock to put a dock in because it enters the Great Lakes, docks, certain docks have to be regulated. If there's a if there's upland, some marshy areas, and then a body of water, to put those pylons in the ground is considered filling a wetland. Can't do it. Can't do it without a without a permit. You gotta you gotta file all the permits to do that. If, but if, if you're Norfolk Southern, you can derail a train, burn the largest amount of deadly chemicals that's ever been released, <laughs> and you can do your own insider testing, we'll trust you. We'll trust you. Totally fine, we'll trust you. But if MI Gardner does their own insider testing to make sure there's not a wetlands, no, 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 we don't believe you. I think it's absolutely the most corrupt, bogus thing ever. And I'll tell you why. Because of a little fancy thing called wetlands credits. Who's heard of wetlands credits? So wetlands credits is a banking system. It's a banking system that if I wanted to fill in this property, I could. I could fill in this property. But I have to buy the credits from a bank. And what are these banks? These banks are land developers that say, see this piece of land that's not economically viable. It's really just, it's off in the middle of nowhere. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a wetlands. I'm going to build a wetlands and I'm going to take these, the amount of acres of wetlands and I'm going to sell it to developers. And the state of Michigan says, well, if you're a developer building a cul-de-sac or a mire or a gas station, Walmart, Kroger, Amazon Fulfillment Center, whatever giant thing that you need you know, to, to put up, you can build that, but you have to buy credits. And it can't just be a one for one. You can't just buy, if you, if you, if you destroy one acre of wetlands, you can't mitigate, it's called mitigation, it's, you know, you're reducing the damage with another acre. No, 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 no. It'd be too simple, folks. It'd be too simple. For every 
acre that is destroyed, you have to buy one and a half acres. So because we are destroying four acres of wetlands, we would have to buy six acres of wetlands credits. What's the cost on those wetlands credits? Try $120,000 an acre. Yeah, you heard that right. $120,000 an acre. So I'm not great at math, but six times 120 is $720,000. Let that sink in. $720,000 for four acres that I want to turn into a greenhouse and garden center that is going to employ 50 people, give jobs, create jobs for the area for 50 people. No, no, no. No, no, no. So for all the people saying, Luke, you're an idiot. Luke, you didn't do your due diligence. Luke, you're not wise with your money. Luke, you should move. Why should any of those be? Did my due diligence. I was making a very wise decision with our money to reinvest into our community that desperately needs jobs, desperately needs workplaces for work, desperately needs high paying jobs, uh, you know, access to fresh food, uh, you know, fruit and vegetables and, and things like that. Desperately needs those things. All those things didn't matter. Just doesn't matter. Doesn't doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whatsoever. And mind you, the aerial footage, the aerial photographs that were taken prior, they didn't even care. I shared with them aerial photographs from 2012 and was not clear. Or sorry, 2011 was not clear. In 2012, it was clear. Magically, a tornado must have came through, taken all of the trees, uprooted them, and moved them off-site somewhere in 2012. But they can't find and pursue the people that did that. But I knocked down about an acre of dead trees and trees that are going to be in the way that are going to be potentially harmful to not only the project, uh, but also people's health and safety. Um, I do that and I get fined about $120,000. Now, imagine they didn't find me $120,000, but that's how much it cost me to get the, to get the, to get the, the violation off of the books. The violation was what cost me an extra hundred and twenty thousand dollars. It's a house in our area, at least. That's a house. That is a literal house that I had to pay excavators, bulldozers to move soil back to where it was, take trees, repile them up to where they're not. The trees can't even be in the wetlands because that's filling a wetlands. I had to pay for all of this. The 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 um. I had to pay for all of the surveys to be done. I had to pay for all of the uh, the um, you know, administrative fees, all the permits and everything. I had, to, I had to pay for all of that. Just to so I could go back to normal the way it was in 2011. It's asinine. Um, so that's what happened. That's the story of what happened. That is the greenhouse project in a nutshell. Those are my three years of hell that could have just spent, could, they could have just said, hey, we thought there was wetlands here. There, there, really, there really isn't. This is, this is not something that we need to, this is not something we need to step in and enforce. It's not even, how is this enforceable? Like, it's okay. Do what you, hey, we're behind you. But they couldn't because 
someone got their little their little ah, power trip, their little their little fix, their little you know. <laughs> power is the biggest drug there is, folks. I cannot stress that enough. Power is the biggest drug there is. Man, they come back hit after hit after hit, and it is an addiction that they cannot get away from. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. And I've seen so many of you have said that you've ran into similar problems. Yeah. So many people. It is crazy. So many people have said they can't even. Yeah. So many problems. So many problems. Because. Yeah. Because someone just feels like they need. They feel small and they need to destroy the hopes and dreams of, you know, someone else. Um, so I showed you, I showed you the maps. Um, I showed you those things. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, there's really not, there's like, yeah, there's other things, but it's not really worth sharing. It's not worth going down this rabbit hole because it's just, it's a never ending. It's a never ending debacle. Um, but, you know, the thing that I think is just, just, it's almost an insult. It's almost like, do you really take me for an idiot type situation? When I see a literal on-ramp to an expressway that Michigan, the state of Michigan, MDOT, Michigan Department of Transportation said, we'll green light that. You got it. When I thought there was a wetlands. I thought we could, what? What, what gives? You know, I'm just this, I'm just this wackadoodle from Michigan trying to live my life and try to impact thousands of people and help people grow better, better gardens and, you know, helps actually promote saving the environment one step at a time that, you know, whoop, I'm the loser. That's just, they, they make you feel like you're an idiot. They make you feel like you're an idiot. Like your common sense is delusion. That's ultimately the most frustrating thing is they will sit there in Lansing and they will say, this guy, this guy's on to our, our, you know, our idiocies, but we're going to make him think that he's the idiot. And I'm sitting here like, I, I just I told him I said please explain this. just exp I was patient I was kind this was this went on for over a year back and forth back and forth back and forth meetings pictures photos surveys all this stuff and I simply said just explain explain this to me how like just give me any any anything that I could say okay fine I was wrong please tell me I I will admit that I'm wrong if I'm wrong and it's like they're just like their their common sense is just whoo, they don't have common sense because the common sense that they wrote down they don't even abide by. It's wild. It's the wildest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So, what are we gonna do about it? What are we gonna do about it? Well, we're gonna put in a pumpkin patch. That's right. I am announcing as of today. Formally today, that we are going to be putting in where we are able, not in the wetlands, in the other parts of the property, we are going to be uh, putting in an official you pick pumpkin patch, the MI Gardener you pick pumpkin patch. And I am so happy about it because I am a firm believer in turning lemons into lemonade, or in this case, as a lot of you said, pumpkins and pumpkin pie. We cannot fight them. It's a, it's a it's a fruitless endeavor. I have lost so many hours of sleep. I went through such a dark place in my life, just angry, bitter, spiteful, because the our hard earned dollars, three hundred and ten thousand dollars, was put into a pile and just burned because some one person said, "I have the power to say." And I say, it's a wetlands because I can say what goes. Plain and simple. It's insane. 
is absolutely insane. And so um, I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do. Uh, this is going to be uh, the Am I Gardener Pumpkin Patch. So you pick Pumpkin Patch. It's going to be something. It's going to be all organic Pumpkin Patch. Uh, the first of its kind in our region. And it's going to be approximately four and a half acres in size. Um, we have a uh, basically a, um, a gentleman that's going to be tilling up the the parts that we can till up. And because mind you, we can't even, you can't till in a wetland. The Right to Farm Act goes out the window with wetlands. Doesn't apply. So we have to, or you have to, you can till the wetlands, but you have to, you have to give your land, the rights to the land over to the government. It is called, uh, there's a special term for it. Um, it's basically, but basically you're deeding, you're deeding the land over to the government in exchange for the rights to farm it. So even though we bought it, the government doesn't have to buy it. They don't have to buy the land. They can just say, uh, see this, see this thing that starts with a G and ends with an N. Well, you can give us this land or well, you can give us this land. And that's ultimately really what it comes down to. It's just coercion. And so we are not going to give them the land. We could, and we could farm all of it. But if you give them the land, they have it forever. They get to keep it. They get to keep it. It's called a conservation easement. A conservation easement basically states that you can use the land. It's, that's what the easement part is, right? It's an easement to me now for me to use, but they get to use, they get to actually own the land to conserve it. Once I'm done farming it, then it goes back. And I have to reapply for the permits every single time that I want to farm it. But I could farm all of it if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that. That's bogus. That is absolutely corrupt. And I'm not going to tolerate that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a pumpkin patch on, on the four acres that we can. And it's going to be a you pick pumpkin patch, organic, because I believe that organic gardening and organic farming practices actually connect can actually fix a lot of the problems that we have. So when you have things like, like runoff and you know pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, things like that entering your waterways, the other side is saying, this is actually going to protect the waterways. It's going to actually going to, you know, give, give runoff something to, you know, all the water that would normally run off. It's actually going to feed the pumpkins. And the pumpkins are going to actually clean the air. It's going to be great. And it's going to generate money that's hopefully going to get us out of this ridiculous pit of hell that I've been in for three years. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely, Betsy. It absolutely is a land grab. 100%. 100%. Because they can actually, what they can do, this is, this is the wild part. The government can actually seize land that they deem to be a resource. What is a resource? Well, the way that the law is written, a resource. I've, oh, I know all there is to know about resources, you guys. Holy smokes. I, I had to do so much research. I was, because it was me. I was my lawyer in this, in this case. And so a resource could be oil, could be gold, could be a precious metal of any kind. It could be, it could be water. It could be a wetland. A resource, they can define their term resource. And at any whim whatsoever, they can say this resource is important to the operations of either the country, the state, or the environment, or whatever. And they can simply say, that's ours. Thank you very much. And you can't do anything about it. You can't do jack squat about it. So... Anyways, yeah. So we're gonna put a pumpkin patch in. I'm gonna show you guys uh, basically the um, the. Um, I gotta pull up a 
and air, I gotta follow up an aerial map. Shoot, I forgot. Um, okay, so I'll pull up here a map so you guys can see what we're working with. I go to the map gallery for Semco G. And uh, we're gonna go to Marysville, Michigan. There we go. And this way you guys can see an aerial photo of what we're gonna do here. I think you guys are gonna love this. I love it. Cindy loves it. Honestly, like I said, I think the community loves it because ultimately, here's the crazy thing, you know, like I said, I'll lock arms I'll lock arms to, I would happily lock arms to prevent the destruction of something that is, you know, important to the, to the environment. I will lock arms to stop the destruction of an endangered species for some greedy corporation that has, you know, thousands of stakeholders that simply just want to make a buck. Absolutely. I will also lock arms with small business owners. They simply say, I'm being unjustly targeted here. I'm being unjustly uh, you know, called out by state, local, federal agencies. And I just, I just want to, I just want to operate my business. Like, can I just operate unmolested? <laughs> can I just, can I just operate unmolested, please? Because I'm like, just trying to go about my day. I will lock arms with them as well. And we can all lock arms together on this. This is insanity at its finest. It's just truly insanity at its finest. So I'm going to share with you guys uh, the screen here. Okay. So, and this is what it looks like now. This parking lot, we, we constructed this parking lot because um, we have a, a, there's a farmer's market there that we do in the summertime. It's called Summertime Market. T-H-Y-M-E, kind of love that play on words. Um, and so um, just to remind you guys, again, these, these dark spots are the low spots that were created not by Mother Nature, but instead when some dingleberry decided it was totally okay to clear the land, which is fine. If you want to clear the land and that's your prerogative, sure. I didn't know that it was cleared prior until I actually had, until I had a, a cease and desist letter on my on my hands that said I was clearing the property. I said, well, it was already cleared prior. What do you mean? And so this entire thing was all forest back in 2011. It was all forest. It looked like over here. It looked like this, which Meyer conveniently got into a hot mess because all this is... All this is considered protected wetlands because there's a creek that runs right along here. This is an actual creek that runs into the St. Clair River. I mean, directly with the St. Clair River. This all here. And this is all actually a different soil type. All of this is not clay soil. It's actually very, it has a lot of hydrology. It actually allows the water to move through the soil. This is an actual wetlands. Meyer was able to, they got into a lot of hot mess because they built on a wetland. They did a bunch of stuff and, you know, whatever. Um, and they, you know, they have a retention pond here because obviously, you know, they need a retention pond because that's what all, you know, you got to have retention ponds to keep runoff to flow into a place, but you can't like, this is all, all that is, uh, is wetlands. But over here, this is not wetlands. This is, this is just, these are like areas where an excavator tore out spots and it's. If it was a true wetlands, it would be uniform. There'd be uniformity. Because there's high and low spots, this is upland. This is low. This is wetlands. This is a wetlands. This is an upland. It doesn't happen. It does not exist. In this small of an area, it would all be wetlands. Not little patches. But because the patches are sporadic, we can't use hardly, I mean, we can only use like 60%, 40% of the property. So where is the Am I Gardener You Pick pumpkin patch going to go? It is going to go 
on a straight line from here all the way across, all the way across, and we're gonna make basically this entire area here the U Pick Pumpkin Patch. I'm really excited about it because the thing is, is that rather than do nothing at all, rather than do nothing at all and roll over dead and just, you know, grovel for someone to come to my aid, which no one will, we're going to do something about it. We're just going to do something with what we can. We're going to be more optimistic. We're going to do better. And we're going to, you know, when they take the low road, we're going to take the high road. I'm just, I'm so fed up with all of this garbage and I'm just so ready to put, put it past me. Um, today was the first day that I got the okay that we could talk about this, which is why I talked about it. Um, for the longest time, we couldn't talk about it because it was, it was pending the violation to be removed. And then there's a, you know, there's a waiting period that you typically want to wait because if you just talk about it the day after, um, it, you know, you can actually, they can, they're spiteful people. They will find things that they can do. So today was the first day where, I could really just openly talk about it. And, you know, a lot of you wanted to know so much about this project. A lot of you have been begging me to talk about, you know, where's the wetlands? Or where's the, where's the greenhouse going? What's an update on the greenhouse? I just talked to a sweet couple that came into the shop today in St. Clair. And they were saying, you know, like, uh, are, I thought you were building some greenhouses out in, in Marysville. What's the update on that? And I gave him the spiel. And it's like, it's still to this very day, people say, what, what's happening with that? A lot of the community, so, you know, what, what a shame, what an absolute shame that was. And um, so, um, yeah, so we're gonna, so we're gonna put a you pick pumpkin patch in. Um, I know a lot of you, um, A lot of you wanted to see, you know, kind of a, there was a, yeah, there was a news article written and because um, a lot of you don't have access to the Times Herald, a lot of you wanted to see the, the article. So I'll share the article with you guys that was written. It was written last year. This was when, um, this was when it actually officially was halted. And so, um, yeah, no, I appreciate it, Georgia's uh, Suburban Homestead. Um, you know, honestly, uh, we thought about doing a GoFundMe. The thing is, is that the GoFundMe, what we would do is if we raised money for the, if we raised money, ultimately it would be so that we could buy wetlands credits but then the problem is we're buying wetlands credits and we're literally just feeding into a system of corruption like at that point i don't want to take any part in being corrupt like that's like a that's like a drug user asking for drugs and me someone that does not condone using drugs simply saying well okay i don't want to i don't want to give you i don't want to give you drugs but I'll give you a ride to a drug dealer's house. Like I'm not giving you the drugs, but I'll give you a ride to the drug dealer's house. And so like, that's, you know, it's just, it's so, it's such a corrupt system. It's so corrupt that honestly, I want nothing to do with it. And the only time that we would ever do something with it is if we, is if, well, the law changes and we can actually uh, do something with the land, then we absolutely will. We will certainly start as soon as we can. Or what we can do, and this is option threefold once we actually gain some money. through. So through the, through the you pick pumpkin patch, what we're going to do is we're going to grow and sell pumpkins and then the pumpkin sales is going to be used to buy a piece of agricultural land that was um, that was deemed once a forested piece of property adjacent to a waterway. This could be a man-made ditch, folks. Or a once 
deemed wetlands area that was converted to a piece of farmland. We are going to buy that with the proceeds from the UPIC pumpkin patch so we don't dig ourselves deeper into a hole. We're going to buy that. And then we as a community, this will be later on, this is in our five-year plan. We as a community and an MI Gardener community will offer up the opportunity for volunteers to come and actually plant out. We're going to bring in bulldozers and we're going to bulldoze the, we're going to, we're going to ungrade the property, take it back to its original state. And the state of Michigan will deem you permits called wetlands remediation. And we we're going to remediate a farmland and turn it back into a wetlands so that then we can do what's called a wetland swap. We'll find approximately six acres. We need, just, we need six acres of wetlands. We're going to scrape it low, get it to hold water, make sure that it's holding water. Then we're gonna plant things like willow trees, cattails, um, tons of different you know, beneficial, beneficial uh, um, plants non-invasives. We're going to put up things like bird feeders. We're doing this because we believe in actually preserving the environment, right? We want, we're pro-business, but pro-environment at the same time. We believe that they can coexist when they're done reasonably. So because we can't fight this, this is already way too deep in the weeds, we're going to simply save up our funds from the UPIC pumpkin patch. We're going to then buy a piece of farmland we're going to turn that into a wetlands and we're going to do a wetland swap. So then we can actually develop that piece of property into the actual objective that we had originally. Then we will give a conservation easement. We will actually give that land to the state of Michigan and say, this is a wetlands that we are deeding you. And we're going to make it better than when we first arrived, because that's what I believe is my job as a good steward of the land, is to turn that into a better place. We're gonna put bluebird houses. We're gonna put, you know, uh, like places for wood ducks to come in the spring. My uncle is a member of the Audubon Society and he loves birds. He's very passionate about birding. So we're gonna put up things to bring in these endangered bird species and actually give them homes. We're gonna plant plants and uh, actually have places for like waterfowl and other birds, um, uh, you know, in, uh, endangered um, species in terms of plants and animals will be able to be there. And um, yeah, and lots of places for bats, a bat house, plenty of bat houses. And ultimately we're going to essentially, because we'll still own the land, we just deed it over to the, we'll just deed it over to, uh, to the government. So we can actually use, we can walk on the land, you can enjoy the land, but you can't like fill it in. You can't farm it. You can't, you'll never be able to develop it ever, 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 ever. It'll forever be a MI Gardner conservation park. And then we're going to allow all of our viewers to come and just enjoy it. A place where you can come and read a book. Hopefully not get eaten by mosquitoes because mosquitoes are a natural part of a wetlands environment. Um, it's going to be something that we're going to do, but that's part of the, part of the five-year plan. Um, and, uh, yeah. And so, you know, we just want, we want to be the better person. We want to be the bigger person. Um, so last but not least, I'll show you guys this, uh, um, let's see here. Okay should be cool. So a lot of you can't read this uh, article because it's the Times Herald and you have to buy the, so this came out in March of 2022. This is our, <laughs> the summertime, the summertime market. This is where we have a farmer's market. Um, it says local business owners plan to continue their farmer's market uh, in Kimball Township after the environmental regulations effectively killed their greenhouse project. Um, and then I said, it's, it's such a depressing reality. Uh, Co-owner of the property for the project, that's my livelihood. That's what put, puts food on my table, which it does. Um, I don't have somebody paying me a paycheck. My business and my hard work is what brings in my food. Uh, 
So the De Michigan Department of Environment and Great Lakes and Energy knowingly cut that off, which they did. They had every opportunity to turn a blind eye and simply say, this does not fit our criteria. This is less than five acres. This is all this stuff. Didn't, they didn't care. Um, so uh, this is us, me and my wife um, bought this property. Uh, we originally had planned a 20,000 square foot greenhouse project complete with a year on greenhouses, tree and shrub nursery, trial gardens, and an event center. Um, but the regulations of wetlands on the property by the Michigan Department of Environment and Great Lakes and Energy make construction difficult, if not impossible, which we talked about today. Uh, Andy Hartz, Andrew Hartz, uh, District Supervisor of Eagle, is the one that ultimately brought this, uh, this, you know, he is obviously the one that made this, uh, this, this call. Um, it's public, it's in the public domain. Um, I'd encourage you guys, do not call him. There's nothing he's going to do differently. Do not call him. Do not stalk him. Do not make threats to him. He is simply a cog in this system. And I'm telling you guys, I'll be so upset at any of you if you go and find this person and, and threaten him, his family. He deserves... What's what's what I think is the ultimate uh, kind of gotcha is simply letting him set with this because ultimately, you guys, ultimately, he is the one that has to go to sleep at night. He is the one that has to sleep and say, "I made this call. I made this call, and I am the one." that could have made the other call. Nobody needs to make threats for his life. Don't, don't make any threats to his family. Don't stalk him. Don't call him. Don't email him. Do not do anything to Andy Hartz. In fact, if I catch any wind of it, I would say you're not a part of the M.I. Gardner community because in the M.I. Gardner community, we believe in taking the high road, always doing what is best, not only for the environment, but for our community and our fellow gardeners and fellow human beings. So simply let him live with that. That's the, that will, that will eat a person alive. And that alone is, you know, punishment enough. Um, so, um, so this is where it says, um, so, I said, you know, I'd been experiencing depression, anxiety, sleep loss over the loss of the project. Um, we had dozens of applications already pending for the employment. Um, the township had already greenlit the product and everything, or greenlit the project. Um, the reason why is, you know, the, the public had shared, uh, there was excitement for the project, which sits in a major economic corridor when Eagle handed down their decision in November. This was November of 2021, mind you. Um, uh, the approximate $2 million project, which we would have gotten funding for, we don't have, to, nobody come to me asking for a blank check for a project. We were going to the bank for this. This was a, this was going to be a loan. Um, so we were going to, you know, we had, we had gotten approval on the funds. Everything was good to go. It's going to be a $2 million project. It was going to create more than 30 jobs. We estimate up to upwards of 50. Um, and yeah, you see right here. Uh, you know, I, I did break down in tears. Um, I was not a, there was no theatrics. It's like, that was, that was our, that was our money. It was our hard earned money that went towards that project. Um, both Eagle and, so both Eagle and Marion's conducted site inspections of the property. Bar Engineering, which uh, was contracted by the Marion's, yes, to conduct the site survey, which you saw that email, uh, conducted their, Concluded there's 4.2 acres of wetlands on the property, which is under the regulatory threshold of five acres and did not appear to be within 500 feet or have direct or have direct surface water connection to an inland lake, pond, river, or stream, according to the survey. But after a survey taken before the couple purchased the property, also concluded that the amount of wetlands on the property fell under the regulatory threshold. So after conducting their own site inspection, Eagle concluded in November that a hydrologic connection, which I showed you, connected the site to a ditch 
They eagle themselves said it was a ditch which connected to a ditch which connected to a blue line stream which could be the creek which then obviously has a connection to another river which is another river which is the great lakes and that's their mission um so yeah um so um basically getting, going further about the things that showed that there was signs of wetlands on the site, which we knew there was obviously low parts of the property. We knew that absolutely, but we didn't, you know, we did not uh, find any form of connection. It was only during a period of super high rain, the water moved into that ditch that then moved in. And moved. Yeah. Um, so, um, yep, prior to Eagle engaging with the owner, he declared the site, uh, sorry, prior to Eagle engaging, so this is what they, this is the violation that they passed. So prior to Eagle engaging with the owner, he cleared the site of vegetation, which it was already cleared prior. Mind you, there was some soil grading in regulated wetlands, which they are now considering it regulated because they can, they can make those judgment calls but none of the other surveyors that we hired said that. Um, and that's just because government and business, they're like oil and water. They do not mix. They are completely polar opposites. Anybody that says they can coexist, they're delusional. Um, and so um, they asked for a restoration plan. We obviously gave that later on. This was done obviously later. Um, so the drainage ditch sits just off their property, or sorry, yeah. So the drainage ditch sits just off the property, which I said, it is a one to two foot wide ditch. That is how wide the ditch is on the side of our property that was dug. It was a hand dug ditch. It contains water only seasonally. Uh, seasonally. Um, the water, or sorry, the layout of the wetlands, which form a horseshoe around the middle of the property, prevent any reasonable development on the property. The original site plan would not fit around the wetlands and the layout of the wetlands prevent any water and sewer lines from accessing the buildings that we build on the property. Um, and then, um, you know, again, they, you know, they said that they would, uh, they would approve minor projects such as installation of utility lines, which you have to file permits for that. Again, it's like, you have to get on your hands and knees, please, please, please let me put a, Please let me put a pile on it so I can run power to my property. Please, you know, it's, you can't do that. It's just it's corruption at its finest. Mind you, this is this is this is the this is the this is the this is the, this is the laugh is that because now we can't do anything with it. There's local idiots that are dumping tires in a wetlands. Which talk about the heavy metals in tires. Look up any study that shows the heavy metals in tires. There's it's it's riddled with heavy metals. And yet these dingbats are dumping crap on our property. And it's like, <laughs> if we were able to develop it, we would have a reasonable, we have a reason, there wouldn't be a reason to dump anything because they're not going to dump tires on a parking lot. They're dumping tires in a wetland, which is just contaminating the water that's running off of it. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Um... And Mrs. and my gardener just came home. Cool. That means uh, my soapbox is almost done here because I want to hang out with fam. So, um, uh, so this is finally, you know, this is again just I, I want to give you guys this transparency because a lot of people, there's so many people that think that I just like would bluff or that I'd exaggerate, but it's not true. It's not true. So, um, says uh, Marion said the couple invested about three hundred thousand dollars of their own money into the property including $160,000 to purchase the property, $45,000 to demolish the old buildings, and then the rest was in survey site plans and permit fees. So um, there you go. And obviously, you know, we had to, we had to provide, I provided uh, records and stipends of all of this stuff because if, if a legitimate news agency is going to cover this, um, it's going to be, uh, you, you can't just, flippantly say stuff that's not true that I mean, they're not going to just publish libel right like everything that i said had to be backed up and that's why like even eagle was 
they they couldn't walk it down that it was a ditch into a ditch into a stream into a creek into a it's like there's a frog in the log in the hole in the wa- bottom of the sea there's a wart on the frog in the log in the hole in the bottom of the sea it's like how far can you possibly take this before it's just ridiculous so anyways rant over we got a video we just uploaded it's phenomenal. I recommend checking it out. It's talking about why your seeds aren't germinating and what to do about it. Stay tuned for more updates on the MI Gardener You Pick Pumpkin Patch. We're very excited about it. It's going to be one of the first organic pumpkin patches in the region. Four acres in size. Open to the public and the family. Uh, we're going to be a family-friendly event. Um, we're going to have things like pumpkins, gourds, even squash. We're going to plant butternut squash, heirloom squashes, and pumpkins for maximum biodiversity. We are going to do it in an organic way, and we are very, very excited about it. So make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be very exciting. Um, i got to head out now because it's uh, going to be dinner time pretty soon. I'm going to help Mrs. Emma Gardner make some dinner. Um, and uh, and she just got home from work, so I'm going to say hello. Say hello to the kids. And, um, yeah, so that's all i got for you guys today. But uh, love you guys. And, um, yeah, and as far as, you know, my my mental health and stuff like that, I'm I'm good. Good. I'm frustrated, but I'm good. And ultimately, this is the last that you will hear about this because there's been so many people when we posted about this um, that said, we, we need explanations. We need receipts. We want to know what you're saying is, is you know, we want to hear your side of the story, basically. And we want to hear what happened to the Greenhouse Project. And we want to know why it's not happening anymore and all this stuff. And so, yeah, since I could talk about it today, that's why. Um. Uh, last thing, North Star Prep Center brings up a great point. You know, if you if you do want to support Emma Gardner and the movement that we have going on here, you can always head over to emmagardner.com and buy seeds. I'd much rather you do that than just donate money because I honestly I appreciate it. It's 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 you know the people that have sent super chats. You know, you guys sent super chats and I appreciate that. And obviously, you know, all of that is all of that's going to go towards the funding of this uh, this this uh, you pick pumpkin patch, but. Um, but uh, anytime you buy seeds, anytime you buy fertilizer, anytime you buy merch, anything like that, it, it absolutely helps. We have 26 staff that work with us. We have huge operations. We are growing by leaps and bounds to impact the gardening community, to impact the overall world that we live in. And ultimately, our goal is to not only help community, but help our environment be better than when we first arrived. And that's our job as stewards. And that's our job as stewards. Uh, is to leave the land better than we first arrived. And we can do that in a reasonable and sensible way. And that's what we're going to do going forward. So um, thank you so much for your support, as always. Thank you all for your love, your pre, uh, your appreciation. And um, I, you know, we're closing one chapter. And we're opening another. So I'll uh, give you guys more updates. Mrs. Emma Gardner is going to be uh, tasked as our chief branding officer to create all of the branding around the UPIC pumpkin patch. It's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned in the next like month or so. Uh, once we get word from the people that are going to be telling up the property, uh, once we get word that they're uh, going to be able to do that, um, we, well, they are going to be able to do it, but dates. We're going to get dates. We're going to do like a little ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, I'm sure at some point we're going to do, we're going to put up, uh, you know, signage. It's going to be a lot of fun. And that way you guys can follow along with the process. And it's going to give us a lot of great content to bring out to you guys. So that's the other thing too. So um, love you guys as always. Thank you all so very much. And uh, as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care guys.